playing that stinky and imagine that if I was a pirate in real life, imagine that, Mrs. Whipple Waffle the pirate, I'd have a great big pirate hat with a parrot, oh imagine that, a marvellous parrot with all its colourful feathers, yes, and sword fighting, oh I'd like to have a sword, stinky, I'd have to have a sword, oh it's the puppets, hello my little puppets, mums and dads, and welcome back to story time once again. Well, Stinky and I have had an absolute fabulous day, I have to say. We have been playing non-stop for most of the day. And of course, playing my absolute favourite game, we have been playing pirates. That's right, playing pirates. I love playing pirates. And I was just saying to Stinky, imagine if Mrs. Whiffle Waffle was a pirate in real life. Can you imagine that, my dear pirate? My dear, uh, I've got pirates on the brain. Oh, I'm all excited. Imagine if I was a pirate in real life. Imagine me with a great big pirate hat. Imagine that with a sword, my dear puppets. Oh, yes, I'd love to have a sword. Oh, and treasure. Gold coins and diamonds and strings of pearls. Oh, and I'd have to have a ship, Stinky. Yes, I'd have to have a ship. And I would love that, my dear Poppets, if I was a pirate in real life. Well, imagine that. We'd have to have an island, Stinky, to bury our treasure. And of course, what else do you find on an island? You find shells. You most certainly do. You find lots and lots of shells. Well, my dear Poppets, speaking of shells, today's story is called there's a sea in my bedroom and thank you stinky dear a sea in my bedroom and of course you find lots of shells don't you stinky when you're at the beach you most certainly do well stinky we have had such a marvelous day and you must be very very tired you're not at all tired well i think you should anyway even if you're not tired you should get nice and comfy dear and get ready to listen to the story all right then Yes, oh pirates, oh I want to be a pirate, Stinky. Can I be a pirate? I can't be a pirate, why not? You don't think I'd make a very good pirate? Why not? I'd be too dangerous with the sword. Oh yes, well I'd like to have a crack at it, I'd have to say. Well anyway, you get comfy, dear, and we'll crack on with today's story. Oh yes, Mrs. Whiffawaffle the pirate. I like the sound of that anyway. I have to say, yes, I like the sound of that. Yes, and here we go, my dear Poppers. Let's make sure that page isn't sticking. No, they do have a habit of doing that. David was frightened of the sea. It was a huge wet monster that gobbled him up, knocked him over and turned him upside down. He didn't like the sea, not at all. Not one bit. Well, there's David there, and apparently, He's quite frightened of the sea, and rightly so, because the sea can be very, very scary sometimes, especially to those poppets that are quite small. When you're a little poppet, you go to the beach for the very first time, it can be quite scary. But some of those waves can be very, very huge sometimes, tumbling about, and it can be quite scary. But he liked collecting shells. He had fan-shaped ones, some that looked like trumpets and some that looked like curved animals' teeth. They were yellow and grey and pink and purple. Well, there's the young man there and he does have quite a marvellous shell collection, I have to say. Some very, very pretty ones there indeed. And I do like shells very, very much. Yes, and you do find them sometimes when you go to the beach and it is wonderful to collect them. Then one day he found a conch shell. It was shaped like a pear, brown on the outside and orange inside. That's a very special shell, said his father. If you put it against your ear, you can hear the sea inside. Well, did you know that, my dear Poppets? If you put a shell against your ear, you can hear the sea inside. I didn't know that. That's something I'm going to have to try. You can hear the sea inside. Well, that's very, very special indeed. How could the big scary sea get inside a small shell, wondered David. But he pressed the shell against his ear and listened and listened. Then he heard the sea. It was soft and growly and friendly. 
David wasn't scared of this sea. Not at all. Not one bit. Well, there's David there and he has the shell pressed up against his ear and he can hear the sea inside that wonderful shell. And it doesn't sound scary to him. It's a wonderful sound that he can hear echoing inside the shell. A lovely, very pretty sound echoing inside the shell. He took the shell to his bedroom and put it on the chair next to his bed. He felt sorry for the sea. It couldn't enjoy being trapped inside the shell. Perhaps he could let it out just for a short while. It was such a friendly sea, all soft and growly. Well, there he is there, and he's staring and thinking about the sea inside the shell. Thinking about it being trapped inside the shell, and perhaps David thinks the sea's not happy being trapped inside the shell, and he wants to set it free. Well, it's actually quite a thought, the ocean being trapped inside such a small shell. He stroked the shell and whispered, come out sea, come out, I won't hurt you. He waited and waited, nothing happened. Then he heard a swish swishing noise and the sea rushed out of the shell. Well there's the shell there and slowly the ocean is beginning to spill out of the shell. It's all starting to come out. All starting to rush out of that tiny shell. I wonder what's going to happen. It curled around his toes, foamed up his legs, and beat gently against the bed. Well, the ocean, my dear poppets, is pouring out of the shell, and it is filling up David's room. He's going to have a sea in his bedroom. How marvellous. The ocean has come to David. How simply wonderful. An ocean, a sea in his bedroom. Yes, I think I'd like that, to have a sea in my bedroom. David was getting wet, but he didn't mind. Not at all, not one bit. He flopped down in the water and kicked his legs and splashed. He rode in his toy box and floated on his back and did somersaults, one, two, three. All around him, his toys bobbed in the water. His red tugboat, his yellow wooden dove and his blue striped seaplane. Well, there's David there, surrounded by all his wonderful toys as they're all bobbing up and down in the water because now his bedroom has become the sea. Wonderful, and there's a crab there and lots of other different things happening on that page. Yes, there's pebbles and sand and there's a fish there that I can see. Simply marvellous. He scooped handfuls of foam. The bubbles disappeared quickly in his hand. He laughed and laughed and laughed. His mother and father heard him and called, What are you doing, David? What are you up to? And there's David there. He doesn't seem scared of the sea at all anymore. And he's having a wonderful time there, happy as can be, playing in the water. Yes, he's not frightened of the ocean anymore. How wonderful. I wonder if uh, anyone will believe him when he tells them that he's had the sea in his bedroom. David jumped into the waves that came up for air and shouted, Mum, Dad, there's a sea in my bedroom. I'm jumping in the waves, I'm getting all wet. Well, there's even a seagull. Now his bedroom has completely disappeared and there's nothing but the blue ocean. The ocean as far as the eye can see. How simply marvellous, how wonderful. Yes, it's a very, very magical shell, I think. It would have to be a magical shell because it's turned his room into the ocean and it doesn't look like a bedroom anymore. A sea in his bedroom, said his, said his father. A sea in his bedroom, said his mother. What is he doing? They opened the bedroom door and peeped in. There was David swimming on the floor with his toys all around him. But there was no sea, no sea at all. Well, I think the magic has worn off and now the sea has disappeared back into the shell and his room has gone back to normal. Yes, the magic has worn off. 
I wonder if mum and dad will believe him. I don't know. David sat up. He touched his trousers and shirt and his hair. He was dry. There was a sea, he said. There was a soft, rally, friendly sea. It lives inside the shell. It's gone. It's gone back now, he said. His father smiled. It's not a real sea, he said. It's just a noise the shell makes. When you put it against your ear. Well, David looks a bit surprised. He's wondering what on earth has happened because there really wasn't a sea, an ocean in my bedroom, and now it's gone. But perhaps that's just going to be a special secret between David and the shell. A very wonderful, magical secret that happened to David. A very special shell, I think. But David knew there had been a sea in his bedroom. There was even a small pile of sand underneath his chair. Look there, he said, look there. I'm going to keep it always. I'm going to put the sand into a jar. And under the chair in his room, there's a little, a tiny pile of sand hidden away there under the chair on the carpet. That's the only thing left behind to remind him of the sea that was in his bedroom. Shall we go to the beach tomorrow? asked his father. You can go swimming in the sea. Yes, said David, that would be fun. He would take his kickboard, his snorkel and his bucket and spade. He wasn't frightened of the big sea anymore. Not at all. Not one bit. And there's David there and he's getting his things ready because he's going to the seaside tomorrow and he isn't afraid of the ocean anymore. The end. And that was called There's a Sea in My Bedroom. And what a wonderful story I have to say and very fitting for today because Stinky and I have had a wonderful time playing pirates and talking about, uh, well, uh, treasure, treasure chests and islands and beaches and swimming in the sea. And I think that's very, very fitting for today. And I particularly like that, a sea. There's a sea in my bedroom. Well, Stinky, my friend, we finished for today. Story time sadly has come to an end. So it's time to say goodbye to the poppets, isn't it? Yes, it is. Well, my dear, dear poppets, mums and dads, thank you so much for tuning in for story time. I hope you enjoyed that story because we certainly did, didn't we, Stinky? Yes, we did. Perhaps you could pretend to play pirates and uh, do some sword fighting, perhaps, or pretend to find some uh, some treasure with some diamonds or some pearls or some gold coins. Oh, yes, some gold coins. That would be exciting. Or perhaps you could pretend to go to the sea and have your very own sea in your bedroom. And as always, my dear ones, thank you for watching. And until next time, bye.